Chapeau, 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 le capello, le capello. Le capello, le capello, le capello. Le capello, le capello, le capello. Non, 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 le capello, le <gasps> what? Yes. <gasps> yes. 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 E benvenuti al quindicesimo episodio della commedia in quarantena. Chiara, dove sei? Sei scomparsa. Eccomi, eccomi, eccomi. Welcome to our 15th. 15th. 15th episode. Fammi posare la maschera e diciamo una cosa sia in italiano che in inglese. Perché? Cosa? Questa yeah. è il quindicesimo episodio. Noi abbiamo iniziato, non mi ricordo più, a maggio. Ma non me lo ricordo, 15 settimane fa, 15 weeks ago. We And now it's time to finish the quarantena in theater, I hope. And no, but we, we, this is our 15th episode. We are going to have another one next week, which is going to be the 16th. And mm -hmm. then we are going to close. So mm -hmm. next week, my friends, is going to be the last episode. Just because, we don't, we don't want to, just because we don't want to do 17 episodes, which in Italian is bad luck, 17. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So last episode will be last week with the faction of fools in Washington, D.C. Yeah? Very excited. But, but, basta perdere tempo. But, Because today we have another, actually others amazing guests from Europe, two of them, not one, but two. And I'm very excited because literally this uh, theater project that, that they have is very, very interesting, very elaborated, I think elaborato molto studiato and uh, i really think that you people should listen to all of that because they are fantastic so and, here uh, we go and the, and the stage is bando for... alle ciance bando alle ciance o, o, o ciancio alle bande <laughs> manifesto poetico where are you manifesto poetico with Carlos Garcia Estevez, yes. fa, fa, mm -hmm. with the lingua, and Paige Allerton, co-directors of Manifesto Poetico. Here we go! Ciao, ciao, ciao! And Manifesto Poetico is a ciao. theater yeah. and production uh, company oh, or yeah. association based in Europe. Quindi benvenidos, yeah. benvenuti. <laughs> Grazie. And welcome to La Commedia in Quarantena. Welcome to the, almost the last episode, almost. Yes, yes. So we, of course, this is a, we are now, Emanuele now, and I are now kind of experts in interrogating people and trying to <laughs> see what they have to say, what their project is like, uh, you know, how they started theater, what they love about theater, and on and on and on. So, and, Emanuele, to you, a te la parola con la prima domanda. And especially if you cried, if you laughed a lot during lockdown. <laughs> how is going, Carlos e Page? Very good? Very good, very good yeah, yes, very, well. very good. Thank you. I have a couple of questions uh, to um, both of you. Um, basically, how did you start being interesting, interested in theater and particularly in Commedia dell'arte at first? And then how was the develop um, in physical theater? Uh, uh, you want to start? No, okay. I, I was I did theater since I'm very a child, since I'm a child. This is my first You know, I just, uh, uh, since a little boy, I was imitating things and characters from, from different places, from TV, from neighbors and stuff. And even 
when I was a child, my mom used to come to, to talk me in the bed and say to me, I was probably eight or seven, eight. And, and then she asked me, what do you want to be when you are old, when you are grand, you know? And I say, I want to be an actor and I want to travel the world. Oh. This is something that I didn't remember, but this is what my mom, my mom, not a few years ago, she said, you, you told me this when, I, when you were a child, you, you were already saying this. And I, it's what I do. I do theater and I travel the world. Well, now no, because we are with the lockdown thing, but uh, in the last 25 years, yes. So, and then um, I just did a lot of theater in different groups as a, as a child, as a teenager, and you know, and, and then I went to Italy to do a, a Commedia dell'arte workshop right before I went, I moved to Paris. This is in 1997. And I met, I studied with Jacques Lecoq in Paris. And, and this, this encounter of this comedia that I, this workshop of a, a month that I did in Italy. And then immediately, a few weeks later, or two or three weeks later, I moved to Paris to, to start the school. This was my introduction to the comedia and the, and the, and the movement theater, if you want. And until now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, we have always it. been very, in Page. No, go ahead, go ahead. Paige. Tell, tell us about you. Um, so I was always really engaged with activism and social justice. And when I was a kid, I thought I would be prime minister in order to make all the right decisions and fix everything, um, according to my ideas. So I went to university and I studied political science and economics in my first year. Um, but I quickly realized, and lots of people told me this as well, that if you can be much more effective in changing the world if you tell stories and you don't go into politics. So my parents in particular <laughs> were pressuring me to become an artist um, and to protect myself from you know, the corruption of having power in politics and whatnot. Um, and actually in my second year of university, once I switched to theater, Carlos came along and gave a, a four day workshop. And this was the key for me totally changed my life. He presented to me a type of theater, which it was a Commedia dell'arte workshop. Um, so he presented to me a type of theater that could be so touching, so for, for the small person, for the, for the oppressed, and um, really make a difference while being tragic and hilarious and uplifting and having the spirit of the collective and all of these things that I, I had been searching for but I had never found. Um, so since then, I basically became a follower of Carlos, <laughs> and then three years later, I went to uh, Paris to study more with him. Uh, wow! Actually, actually uh, I can see there is a picture behind you. Let's see, oh, let's yeah. see, let's see, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Are you ready? Because I'm gonna show it better. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So big names here, Carlos, huh? Because we yeah. have uh, Sartori, we have Dario Fo, and we have Carlos Garcia Estevez. So tell us a little bit about uh, this uh, situation. This situation is a Sartori family, Paola, Sara, Donato. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 2009, they came to, Donato and Paola only, came to Amsterdam, where I just was organizing a festival on comedia and physical theater, small festival. And they came. Um, I did, I was assisting Donato over the years before. Uh, I studied with him myself, uh, in 1999, but then uh, later during years, uh, I was assisting him uh, as a movement uh, assistant for the, the in their Seminario Internazionale de Comedia dell'Arte, the Construzione de Mascara. Um, then what happened is that the year after, Paola Pizzic, who is a dear friend of us and also a, a, a teacher and a, an old, old friend, I say, uh, la mia mamma italiana, uh, she organized a, a festival of masters and then uh, she put together a, a, an extraordinary group of people among, uh, well, Dario Fo, Mario, you have him earlier, Mario Pirovano. Yes, uh, Mario Pirovano, ciao Mario. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, uh, 
uh, also uh, Edgar Stiefel, the mass uh, sculpture from uh, from Maria Muskin, Ted de Soleil, Mumenschans, the uh, Bernie, uh, uh, um, and many other people now, Faye Lecoq, Pascal Lecoq, uh, blah, 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 a big number of people. And then uh, my company, uh, we co-produce with them uh, this festival. And then in this photo is a photo that uh, someone made that uh, it came to me later, um, where we were doing the introduction, the, the presentation of the festival, and me as a co-producer, Dario as a honor, honorary guest, of course, who came to perform for us uh, in the festival, uh, Uh, mm -hmm. parte della lezione di teatro e, e Donato who was also the other producer of the festival and unfortunately in that photo we don't have Paola which was basically the core and the and the engine of this whole mm -hmm. thing so mm -hmm. it's a bit unfair that, uh, that she's not in that photo but she is in in our mind all the time of course as a great uh, curator and a great uh, artist, of course, uh, as a continuator of this uh, legacy of the Sartori family, which we all know that they are uh, the beginners of the, yeah. of the beginning of the mask. We know the history. Anyway, so this is the context of that photo. And, I'm just uh, showing the photo again, because I think it's amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah. You look the same, yeah. Carlos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same for me. <laughs> uguale, uguale. <laughs> uguale, esattamente uguale. <laughs> so, so thank you. It, it sounds like you 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 had a wonderful training with amazing people. But I want to go back to Paige because I was um, when you said storytelling, I I kind of was curious. So tell us a little bit about uh, the storytelling that you were saying. So of course it's doing theater. How do you connect it with this project that you guys have now and that you called Manifesto Poetico? I want to understand better why Manifesto Poetico instead of Commedia simpatica, or you know, <laughs> you know, it sounds like it's a slightly different project than uh, a, a regular commedia dell'arte troupe. So, if you can, well, tell one, us of the more. Main, one of the main things is we are not a commedia dell'arte troupe, and we also do not have a particular style. It's, um, we I mean, our name, Manifesto Portico, maybe you can talk about this more. It's a very contradictory statement. Some it is a contradictory statement. Mm -hmm. As we know, by definition, Manifesto is something you write down with the intentions that you have to do something and mm -hmm. the way you want to do it and how you want to do it and you're going to try to accomplish that. Extremely concrete. Very concrete. Normally, very short also. One, two pages, that's it. And, my, and Poetico is completely something that is... It, it doesn't exist. It's everything that belongs to the dreams and belongs to, to the things that we don't see. So this is the thing is that we want to uh, make a manifest where we're going to write down everything, but you are not going to see it. It's going to be invisible and suggestive. Exactly. It's an oxymoron. So yeah. the yeah. manifesto poetico. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, I have another question for both. Uh, you uh, spoke, you speak uh, in your reviews, in your website about uh, the Greek etymology of the word trans, which means to go beyond, beyond. How do you develop your project, your laboratory research, keeping the critical spirit of Comedia dell'arte and its patterns of fixed characters? Yeah, well, when we use the term, the, the, the Greek, a term uh, trans it goes together with trans poetico which is how we call uh, the projects the, the the project that we do around the world where we create stories we do shows with uh, people from the place where we go from the country where we go okay. um trans is beyond but trans poetico means to go beyond creation So for us, it's not important to create the thing, but it's everything that passed over the creation based by the starting of the 
process of the of the of the project of the creation so what is interesting for us is to engage different artists from the lo local artists from all kind of different disciplines and what we do with them is to create together with them a new language and what we do with the laboratory we, we develop and we and then uh, uh, what what is important uh, is to see how artists from the same place or the same country they get together to understand each other of course a, a musician um, and a dancer and a filmmaker with an architect each discipline is pretty complex and difficult to understand each other because we have different mind and different brain right already a physical actor a, a movement theater person together with a text based actor it is already difficult to understand each other well what happened is that if we just delete entre guillemets as they say in french uh, if we delete what everybody knows and we offer a new language it's like the same interview we have here we will do it in chinese can you imagine <laughs> well, everybody say no because we don't speak Chinese, but we will be all very careful to try to understand each other because we don't understand. Basically, is what the Italians, you, back in time, you did in Comedia dell'arte. So this is one element that we use from the Comedia dell'arte. But attention, we take the traditional Comedia, we take the traditional Comedia to learn from the tradition and to get a historical perspective for something that needs to be new now. 2020, it is not mm, 1500, right? So what 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 happened is that is that a, 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 what is important is that the show, the result, is part of this process, and when we leave, the process in this collective artistic collective continue. Why? Because we just involve the people, the togetherness of the artists of the place, for a better world. We engage the artists to keep going and telling stories for a, for a better continuity, for, for giving voice to the oppressed, to give voice to the ones that they are immigrants, to give voice to the woman, to the men, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So go beyond creation because we don't go for the what the industry called, which is the result. We go for together improving the quality of life or, or co-citizens. If mm -hmm. it's a complete English word, mm -hmm. did yeah. I answer? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Also, I find it very interesting that you say fixed patterns of Commedia dell'arte, like um, because people can can use that term to mean many different things. And one thing we talk about in particular is the difference between patterns and codes. Um, so patterns are are tendencies that repeat that we can all observe and we can all feel, and you don't need to have any special knowledge but codes are patterns that we've specifically assigned meaning to. So I think uh, a lot of Commedia dell'arte troops will work with codes, with specific movements of specific yeah. characters. And that's what you might say a fixed character. Yeah. That is actually not what we're interested in because yeah. we're interested in going beyond that and touching people from different places and different times, and and also we need to constantly reinvent ourselves for every single project because nothing is the same as yesterday, and it won't be the same as tomorrow. So, um, yeah, yeah, we we haven't just invented one language. We are in the constant creation of a living language. Yeah, I, I think also Manuel, you you were mentioning the critical spirit that mm -hmm. exists in my life, which I totally agree. Of course, but we we uh, in Manifesto Poetico we are we are in a in a, we are observing more another particular spirit, which is the spirit of celebration. The fact that you are there and the fact that I'm here. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the way we talk when you are in Piazza facendo un spritzetto, you criticize because it's a national sport. <laughs> if, if you don't celebrate, if you don't. Celebrate life. If you don't celebrate, not you, I mean, it's a way of talking, but if we yeah, don't yeah. celebrate life, if we don't celebrate that we are just together, and if we don't celebrate that we are all going to die, but together, if it's possible, not individually, then, then, then the critic will come. You see what I mean? So for me, this whole 
approach when we uh, encounter the new artistic uh, people, eh, the, the contributing artists in different countries, we just talk about celebrating the spirit of celebration. But this is something that belongs to our Mediterranean culture, the, the traditional, yeah. popular tradition. It's not like Comedia del Arte. Comedia del Arte copied this, but already from way, way before, we have just the spirit of celebrating life. Uh, so right. it is important, like the critical aspect is there, but the critical, if we just take the critical element, it needs to be suggestive, but never say it. Mm -hmm. This is from our, of course, Poetico, uh, yeah. it needs to be suggested. I don't know if right. that makes sense. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfectly just... explained, very, very beautiful uh, philosophy and uh, yeah, uh, uh, you also talk about sp special dramaturgy. I would like to understand the, what it is. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> because I read a little bit about you guys and I, right. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Uh, um, yeah, tell us about, uh, I think you, you give a lot of workshops. I've seen, seen from your videos and photos working on the space. Mm -hmm. you know doing a lot of exercises and you and you give workshops all around the world yeah. <clears throat> so so tell us a little bit and and possibly all this work you do with the space how it translates with the masks comedia patterns no uh codes <laughs> but uh, tell us a little bit about this yeah i mean i, I mean uh... The, 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 I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to answer. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do a long story short, if it's possible. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make it short. So basically, okay, I'll make myself comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Chiara, you're gonna be uh, touched because when the whole thing happened, the beginning of the whole thing happened in Boston. Ah, right. It happened in Boston. I, I don't. By, I don't know by heart now the 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 the, the, the year. But I was uh, invited by uh, to, to perform in Boston University, and then uh, the a dear friend of mine, Judith. Uh, yes, Judith Jaffe. Yes, yes. We, we, Chaffee, we just went for dinner, and uh, uh, her partner, uh, Pete, uh, a, a extraordinary scientific. Uh, was uh, having dinner with us. He's a computer scientist. He's a computer scientist and also a bio, I don't know exactly, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry about that, but a very, very clever guy, an extraordinary person. Um, that day before I went to the dinner, I just had a, my very first Skype call with my parents, video call. My parents couldn't believe, they were even crying. It is not possible that we are talking for free online and then before i was calling and paying a, a fortune of phone calls because like uh, la mamma in italia la mamma in España needs the phone to see of that course. The is of course. healthy so i just arrived to the dinner and say wow you cannot believe what happened with my parents i just they were amazed by the fact that that that, that is skype and is direct like we are doing right now which is a total normal reality for us but my mother and my father were amazed by that and I said, I cannot understand. And I say to Pete, do you understand? And I say, yes. Eh, what do you understand? Yeah, well, I'm a computer, computer science. science. Uh, of course, I, I, I know how this is made. It's 010101, binary, whatever. Binary. Uh, yeah. And I say, well, I, always, I have difficulties understanding how a plane can stay on the air for a long time. But somehow, because the gravity and the force of the engine, I can understand. But this 0101, you are telling me that YouTube it's just 0101 and it, and she said yes and then i said to him but how the heck do you understand that <laughs> and then he said well very simple i speak the language it flipped my head it flipped my head <laughs> the coding by the way right yeah well I languages was, are codes i just uh, thought exactly like, oh wow the zero one zero one oh yeah. I say, so of course, I say, I, 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 he said to me, do you speak Chinese? And I say, no. And he said for me, why? Because I don't know the language. But if you know the language, you will speak Chinese, isn't it? As simple as this, as simple as this. And I say, well, wait a second, what about, 
What about, this is later in my own research mode and time later, uh, what about if I just tell a story where the space is the one telling the story and not the actor? Crazy, right? Well, let, let me try. Let me try. So, so what happened is that what about if it's the space in between? Because this Romeo and quella Giulietta, senza la diagonale, non ce la fa. <laughs> And oh, I love oh. it. You even spoke yeah. a little bit of with the Florentine accent that I am from Florence. Yeah. Un yeah. ce la fa. Uh, little <laughs> bit. I loved it. <laughs> Quindi uh, Romeo e Giulietta without that diagonal, un ce la fa. Yeah. No? Eh? yeah. So the spatial dramaturgy is to write the story from the space. So from this that you don't see, that is there. Uh, amazing. And in fact, yeah, amazing. So you do exercises with distances and uh, mm -hmm. uh, how would you, how would you, I don't know, if I don't know if you can tell us a little super short exercise that you do with your students, because I've seen around the world in Japan, you, you. Uh, yeah, you, um, just to explain this, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. It's an experiential thing. It's an experiential thing. <laughs> uh, can, can, give... I, can I send the video The Space Speaks? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Me... Okay, yeah. so let's see, let's see this video because I think it will clarify oh, yeah. and... One minute. Okay. Have fun. Mais des choses tout dur ça m'intéresse, c'est euh, d'être ensemble. Parfois, ça marche pas. Enfin, du, du, ce que je veux dire, comme beginning, ça marche pas. Tout le monde hésite, tout le monde veut faire quelque chose. Mais à un moment donné, il y a un switch qui arrive. Et après, l'espace qui marche tout seul. Et des gens qui savent où est-ce que je dois y aller comme euh, l'espace qui parle. Je suis là, comme l'espace, comme je suis là, je suis là. Donc des gens qui arrivent. Je suis là, je suis là. Prochain rythme. Non, 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 non. Il est vivant, l'espace. Mais après, des comédiens, qui, comment ils préparent pour faire vivre l'espace Et aussi, comment il peut prendre ce moment on entre cet espace. Comment on prend cet espace Vraiment, bon, ça c'est délicat. Donc, on a besoin de préparation de, de stick, d'être ensemble. Comment on prépare pour écouter cette voix de petit espace Et là. Donc, ça c'est pour moi, c'est quand même incroyable. Parce qu'on a juste 5 cinq, cinq jours. On a réussi à pas mal, pas mal de fois écouter ensemble de cette petite voix d'espace. De Donc, c'est pour moi de la manière de. Alors, c'est pêche. Comment on partage de cette délicatesse C'est cette... super important pour moi. Des gens qui, qui est capable de 5 jours d'apprendre d'être ensemble. Ça, c'est pour moi. Ah oui, c'est vrai, c'est bien de comprendre comme ça. Donc, c'est vraiment de, pour moi ce laboratoire. c'est Il faut que ce sur d'être ensemble, d'être écouté de, des autres. Wonderful. Yeah. So that, that yeah. that's a student speaking, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's right. Asahi. Yeah. Asahi. Yeah. 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 And I saw um, other collaborators on your website, which is manifestopoetico.com um, on your laboratory research. Let's talk about more uh, the the team and the advisory boards and some names and how you collaborate with them. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we have like two groups. Uh, one is their artistic team, which we have uh, David, uh, McDonald, Olmo Hidalgo, Paulo Serantes, and Pascal Lecoq. Four plus Paige and I, we're six. And depending on the projects and depending on the circumstances of the projects, et cetera, et cetera, well, we, we just uh, ask them to come and to join the team because we need them. So, uh, Paulo Serantes, which is the musician uh, director and the light designer of the, of the laboratory, uh, is the one that comes the most because we, we need him more often. Olmo Hidalgo, also Spanish, has been collaborating a lot with us during the, the open laboratories, which is what you were calling before uh, Chiara uh, workshops. So we don't do workshops, we do open laboratories because it's important. We don't come to tell something and you are going to do what I'm telling you. We are researching. So we just suggest that we put things on the table to try. And we just don't have students. We are all contributing artists. This is terms that are changing. That's mm -hmm. why it's not just a clarification. And then uh, Pascal, uh, who uh, we she contributed many times during research periods, uh, several shows also where she just helped us with some of the designing, scenography, costumes, etc. And David from New York, actually. Yeah. Uh, he's an expert uh, in voice and Shakespeare. So he helped us a lot when we are working in English uh, in some projects where we was English speaking people. Mm -hmm. And this is the artistic team, which the performing a part of co-directing the laboratory together with me. We, she's a performing artist, an anthropologist, and is the person who is in charge of the content creation. Uh, extremely important. And dramaturgy. And dramaturgy. And dramaturgy. And Another question uh, to you both. Uh, the most important thing for La Comedia in quarantena, because the theater in Europe, in America, is in lockdown, very lockdown, and we are uh, passing through difficult times. So what did you do during quarantine? Uh, well, question. actually, <laughs> actually, before uh, the quarantine, we had a project um, with a writer from Canada and Arizona um who approached us wanting to write a book about our work mm -hmm. and so actually we were thinking how are we going to have the time to write this with yeah. her so luckily we had the quarantine and uh we've been doing a lot of interviews with her and working on this and the really interesting part about it is it's actually it's not about it's not an instruction manual how to do theater or how to do what we do or whatever it's more about um, our philosophy and our ideas and and this search for a better world and better theater making. And it's really fascinating to actually have it at this time when the whole world is in upheaval and hopefully on the cusp of a big changes, you know, yeah. in many, in hopefully in, in a positive direction. Um, but irregardless, it's a really interesting time to be to be writing this down and thinking about it. Yeah, also a part of writing, uh, we were talking with colleagues in different countries and etc. And some of them were, oh, I don't know, or some people were just in panic. Um, I, I, we just we, we just thought, well, you know, the world has stopped. We too. <laughs> Let's listen, you know. Let's listen to what is going on. And then what we were doing during the lockdown basically was a... Uh, uh, to reflect, to yeah. reflect about. Yeah, like we often say, like there's a time to push and there's a time to pull. And I mm. think this is the pulling time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, what is the surf? What, what, how, how, in our case, but in all the artistic community, but in our case, in Manifesto Poetico, how can we surf our audience? How, what, what, what is the audience wants now? Everybody's like, yeah, now we shift into online things and then my school now or my company is now doing this. Yeah, no, we don't do this. We just prefer to listen and to reflect. Where are we going? Who are we? What is what is going on? You know, and it's interesting because uh, the whole philosophy is even more interesting. Like a why artist, why we do theater? Why? Yeah. You know, well, 
and etc etc yeah, yeah actually that. actually it's connected with the phrase that you uh, mentioned on the review on may 2020 on john hopkins university press that we have to start from zero is it connected with lockdown too maybe yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> like we all understand we i mean if we look at the we all understand that the, we are in an impasse worldwide mm. impasse. like uh, if we if we come back to the to the to the to the mask and back 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 in time where, where we talk we could talk about the read of passage where we have this moment of transformation between separation from something transit transform into incorporation we know very well this if we are a bit aware of the of the rite of passage then we are in this moment where we don't know where we don't know where are we gonna go yeah you know yeah. we don't know when I see you and then uh, you show me the mask, I think it's the one of Pantalone or Dottore, and you put it on, it's, not, it's, it's something else, right? Yeah. And then the audience gets a, a this, this reaction. So if we expand this concept or this phenomena into a bigger level, like a worldwide, in terms of existency, in terms of many other aspects, we don't know where we go. And if you don't know where you, my grandfather will say, if you don't know where you go, you stay where you are until you know where you go. <laughs> don't put the hand in the fire because it's gonna burn unless you are Arlequino. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it is. It is for us. It's very important this lockdown because it's a meditative thing. How I gonna serve the thing? Well, basically, let's start from zero. Our choice is to develop language, a language that we don't talk yet together. Because then this language will put everybody together again. Um, so I'm not the one saying this. Jack Copeau already, beginning of the 1900, already say that. We need to restart everything from zero. Yeah. You know, like it's like a, it's like a cycle. Like a, where, which theater we're going to do again? The theater that looks like cinema? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what else? How we which stories? How we tell these stories? You know, uh, here we are in a in a context of comedia del arte. Where is la comedia del arte today? Do I see? I'm talking about. I'm gonna isolate the example in Spain. Do I see in the streets someone that moves or talks like Arlequino? The Arlequino that we see from the traditional comedia? No, I don't see it. So where is? How is? What is the? It's, it's much more interesting to see other things than the stereotype. I'm more interested in the archetypical level of the concept. Yeah. You know, because yeah, for yeah. me, my, my, in, my, in my point of view, the character is not an archetype. The character is a character and creates and provokes an archetypical reaction in the audience. That's how I understand the characters of La Comedia del Arte. Uh, you know, because our characters don't evolve. And 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 anyway. and uh, and Carlos, you you talk you are talking about conte contemporary commedia dell'arte, uh, another point of view. Who 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 is it? What is it today? So it just came to my mind that uh, you wrote an article uh, for the Routledge Guide to Commedia dell'arte, and I think we have Olly Creek here in listening to us right now. Yeah. Hello, yeah. hello, Oli. Ciao, Oli. Is, you know, he, he, he cared, he took care of the edition with Judith Chaffee. Yeah. yeah. And so, the, if I'm not mistaken, the article is titled Mask Performance for a Contemporary Commedia dell'Arte, uh, which you wrote with the editing of Page. Uh, yeah. So, so mm, that, that's perfectly what you were saying now, right? I just I just I, I'm not entitled to to certain historical things I'm not Italian so to talk about this with two Italians plus all the Italians that might be listening to us it is delicate yeah it is very delicate but you did a great job of transformation you know thank you very much <laughs> no and and you know I think it's already important to recognize 
this, what you're saying. That is a delicate thing that uh, some people can be, oh no, but I'm Italian, I, I have the right to perform Commedia dell'arte. You, I mean, here we go into the huge, huge, huge problem of the cultural appropriation, which right. here in the United States, it's becoming, I think, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you I, know. I, I, just for you but, guys. But I know. don't think that's the problem at all. It's how you interpret it, what, what, what you do with it today. And I think these are all themes that you guys are, are you know, uh, bearing air and, and uh, treating now. And they are delicate mm. themes, but I think yeah. if nobody talks about what yeah. are we going to do? And it's interesting that it's attached to nationalism, which um, when did Italy become a country? I'm wondering. Exactly. Exactly. Long, long story. <laughs> yeah, um, long story. Yeah. Anyway, I just think uh, to coming back to the to to the, the this uh, question, um, um, I just I just thought that I need to observe and research. Provoked by Jacques Lecoq in 1999, before he died, like uh, he asked me, go and look for the tragical depth that exists in Comedia dell'arte. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Comedia cannot exist. This is mm -hmm. Jacques Lecoq telling me in 1999, and I start and I still doing this. Um, so I I thought let's go observe understand the gestures, the movement, the way of talking, the way of eating, the way of cooking, the way of making love, the way of all this, in order that we find the essence of how a popular theater express itself. And the Comedia dell'arte, not as a style of theater, which I understand that we can say that it's a style of theater, but as, a, as the meaning itself, the art, the profession of telling stories. That's the meaning of Comedia dell'arte. You correct me if I'm wrong. No, absolutely. So, just right. to... so mm -hmm. Comedia with double M is not just comedy. It's many other many other registers of theater, tragedy, melodrama, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I want to defend that I do Comedia dell'arte in the meaning itself of Comedia dell'arte. The art in the gremio of doing of telling stories i want to be a professional that serve the, co the, co the community in which i tell stories that can help to to release the anxiety the oppression that the working class those that don't have the voice are getting from the people from the from the from the oppressors from the power etc etc yeah. so it's extremely important that i don't change this uh, actually, in that uh, festival we organized together with Sartori in 2010, Bernie and Stiefel, in different moments, they say to me, you are not doing the Comedia dell'arte that these people are doing. These people means the Italian artists that were there. The majority were Italians, obviously. Uh, I said, you have to change the name. Because if you say that you're doing Comedia dell'arte, the misunderstanding of this museum with legs that we see around can be uh, delicate, as we say before. So I just say, okay, I want to do a contemporary Comedia dell'arte. And for those that want to understand, to, to know what I mean, well, there is the website and there is the, the work we do, etc., etc. So for me, the use of the mask is not that important. The use of the typology in which we all love, because it's so romantic, especially in the United States, how much we love when we open the mouth and we say Arlecchino and di di da, di di da, this Italian melody we all love, mm -hmm. but it's just working. The question is, is that working? Mm -hmm. Or is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a business, is a money making thing? Because we fall in love with this identity. I want to feel the identity of the, 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 the Italian thing. I think Italians are way better than that. <laughs> Plus, you don't make much money out of it, by the way. <laughs> no, I know. I know what I mean. The, 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 the if you do it, you do it for passion or for, you know, but certainly I don't think for the money. Uh, no. Before, we, before we to, to ask you about the next project, uh, let's say a big hello to Simone Latini, who is listening to us. Uh, he said, commovente. 
and uh, Lucia De Luca. Come on, then refer to the video, the video yes. that we What a terrific yeah. video. Uh, Hi, Holly, uh, Holly Creek, and Simone Latini, right? La Lang Setu, um, Le Melange Total. Grazie per, um, per, Grazie. Uh, per ascoltarci um, e per guardarci. Um, sì, infatti, uh, guys, uh, write questions for our guests today. If you are curious about something, if you want to clarify something, we are here. Uh, they are there, they are here. Um, yeah, in fact, Simone Latini is saying it's complicated talking about Italian identity nowadays. Yeah. Ah, ah, <laughs> I'm already <laughs> having a headache. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I will be very quick. Um, uh, Carlos and Paige, uh, so Manifesto Poetico has been touring all over the world in Malaysia 2013, Connecticut 2014, Colombia next year, I mean 2015. Uh, Netherlands, 17, and Senegal, 2018, and so on. How was your work received, very quickly, if you have an anecdote, um, received by the audience of different cul uh, culture, different countries? And how is to work with local collaborators? Well, it's, it's really amazing to be able to work with so many different people and see the differences, but also see the commonalities. And uh one of the things like things we talk about a lot are power and privilege and a commonality that we hear from the people we work with is they feel an incredible empowerment afterwards um to have to have incorporated themselves in this language and also been part of creating this new language it often they say that they've they've realized their own capacity as creators or it's opened up new possibilities of how to make art and also just how to give voice to their own concerns for real and not be stuck in a form, but really have the tools to be in a system that can constantly evolve. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, when we when we go to a country and, and we meet in the, the group of artists, of course you come from abroad and then you are the director and everybody's you know, waiting for you it's to fascinated, say. Fascinated, right? And then, and then immediately the, the, the thing that happened is that we just, first day, first thing is to establish everything horizontal. There is no hierarchy. I play the role of director, but I'm not the director. I just listen to everybody and and and, and the only thing that happened with us is that the tools for the of the language that we are sharing with them, we know them a little bit better because we've been using them before and we test them in different uh, shows and etc. So we help them to learn how to use the knife and the fork. And but immediately they think that they have a strong voice in this production. Not only the director and I do what the director is telling me, but but it's just they are contributing artists. To contribute to tell a story. This is from the participants, the, the, the artists that participate with us. They're all locals. We don't know any of them ahead. We just arrived. We don't know what we're gonna do. We don't know the people. We don't know if, if the level is high or low or if they love each other or not. We don't know the qualities of their skills. We know nothing. And also, I think an important thing is like we are not democratic. If one person is not okay with what's going on, we stop and we listen. And we listen to that person who might have a better idea than the, the majority of us. And if they don't have a better idea, we'll work it out together. So I think a lot of people get a bit shocked when we say we're not democratic. You know, we're more we're at more consensus, even though somebody still is the director. Um yeah, it's more consensus or anarchistic model. Yeah. Of and Never. Anarchism, I see, which has a lot of associations, but what we're talking about is more order without power. We're not talking about chaos and everything's anarchy. No, anarchy actually refers to an order, not um, not just havoc. Yeah. yeah, and then the audience, the audience so far in what we experienced in the last 10 productions or more, whatever, uh, by the use of this language, uh, special dramaturgy, is that the audience sees a story, but receive it in a particular way because the space does something to them that I right now today I don't know exactly how to explain in short uh, terms. That they receive the story not only from the understanding point of view only, but also from other layers. 
You know when you put on a mask and it works? It's mm -hmm. not always. But mm -hmm. when it works, maybe out of a thousand times I play with a mask, they maybe once was like a bam. Something happened to the audience that no one can explain. But it's just when you fall in love for the first time, you don't know what it is. So we had these uh, reactions in the audience. So not all the time and not everybody, but more or less this uh, this kind of, yeah, it's, it's new. Oh, I don't know. I never saw it like this or these kind of reactions. And I want to emphasize, like, when you were asking us what is spatial dramaturgy, and then we showed this video, it is, ex like, when you see that video, you might say, like, it's super abstract. People are walking around with sticks. They're moving. What's going on? Like, what is this? And what I want to emphasize is this parallel with Skype the audience can understand, be touched, and feel something without understanding what's going on. They do not need to speak the language. You and I right now do not need to understand binary code to enjoy this video call. You know what I mean? And that is what the audience is for us. They do not need, to, it is not an abstract art kind of thing. Although it is highly abstract, it is extremely concrete and real and human and I mean, one of our main goals is to be accessible to anyone who walks off the street, even the people who don't like theater, you know, mm -hmm. the people who fall asleep during the show <laughs> or a typical show, you know, that's that's also our audience. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. if you come to Boston, I will, will be very, very happy to see one of your shows. And speaking about one of your shows and <laughs> and uh, you know all your productions um i do have a video that we can show about uh, this new project that you guys are have been working on i don't know if you were interrupted by the lockdown or probably you were not able to perform the whole thing so tell us about a little bit your upcoming projects um and then i'll show i'll show this video Okay, the, the yeah. upcoming project is uh, is a trilogy called Epic yeah. Yes, the trilogy, yeah. and we've done the first part in Mexico, and the second part in Northern Ireland, and the third part was supposed to have just finished a couple of months ago, but it will be happening next year. Next year, yeah. So there's exactly that's why I thought that you guys were interrupted, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, yeah. We, so it's it's called the Epic Borders trilogy. Yeah. Um, and, okay. And it, yeah, and it's. Um, the, the the first part was the gate of hope that happened in mexico in guadalajara last a year ago for now now a year ago yeah september actually yeah. and then it was about the the you know the people that tried to go to another country for a better world put in on risk their own lives and the lives of their families and dealing with this whole situation that we all know very well about immigration and putting your lives on risk and some yeah. of the actors who are in the cast actually had um uh immigrated and take had jumped on a train in the middle of the night that they call the bestia and made it to the united states yeah. and of course since had had come back yeah wow so wow. What we, what we try to do because of course there is extraordinary artist in the in mexico that already touched the subject of immigration we are not we, we were not but what we thought is, what about if we take a group of artists from Mexico, from Guadalajara in that case, and we just develop with them a language where they themselves show this subject from a poetic point of view. So we can reach the audience from another angle of something that they already know very well, better than us. And this was the Gate of Hope. The next, the second part is Belfast 1919, which happened in Belfast. And it has to do with the border between it, or, origin, yeah. yeah, many different things. Originally, it was this border between the Northern Ireland and, and the and, and the and, and Ireland. Uh, but then, uh, what happened in the Middle East that the artists uh, we end up realizing that they were a second. This border is very busy with Brexit. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, right. Hello, this Belfast point is the only geographic border that exists in Europe. Uh -huh. uh, wow, what a show. So we it was very interesting uh, to work with a fantastic group of artists also in Mexico. Um, and they all were contributing. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, it was. Uh, so this video that you're about to show is a little trailer from just a tiny clip from Belfast. 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 And the, the last part is called "In the Name of Humanity," that is gonna be done with indigenous artists mm. from uh, Manitunal Island in the in the in Canada. In Wikwemakong unceded territory. Wow! 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 And this was. Uh, this uh, project suffered the, the lockdown and the whole yeah. pandemic, uh, yeah. but uh, it's basically the the border that we all, we all, humanity, we put between us and nature, and how far and detached we are from nature, and how we don't know anymore how to how to do it. We think we are on top of it, but we are ju we just belong to to nature, to the mother earth. So we had this idea and this. Uh, goal to tell this story but we didn't dare we didn't we didn't want to tell this story because we is not for us i mean we thought there is a group of people indigenous artists that are the ones that for us are entitled to tell this story because they really are living in communion as part of it with nature right. So yeah, we encounter yeah. them, they have an art center where they do the, their productions and all that. And then what we will do is to just engage with them uh, to create together a story about uh, In the Name of Humanity, which is the title, which is based and inspired by the, the, the book by Ricardo Petrella. In Italian. Mm -hmm. in Ita an Italian mm -hmm. from Florence, actually, but living in Belgium for many, many years. Mm -hmm. is the... Um, is the one who declare uh, and present the manifest in the UN in the, uh, for the water, and okay. now she declaring water as a human right. Exactly, and right. now he's yeah. preparing another. He's preparing another manifest where he declared poverty illegal. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really remarkable person, uh, and he is also offered to to write the introduction and the four four words. Yeah, the forward of the book. The forward of the book that we are about to publish. Let's let's show. I'm a... gonna send the the video because I'm very curious and I want for our you know audience to see it. This wonderful, wonderful project. So this is the part two of the trilogy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, Carlos and Paige, for your work in pedag pedagogy and anthropology. Yeah, in keep, very, it up. Very, very... keep it up. This is wonderful. Keep us posted. Keep us, you know, um, send us uh, some news about when you'll be able to do the third part. Uh, yeah. It sounds, sounds amazing. Thank you for your wonderful, you. deep, deep the work you know yeah. it's uh, very beautiful of theater anthropology and uh, and you know again 
uh, many beautiful causes. So we have to go. But gracias, one muchas gracias. This one hour of wonderful explanation of your philosophy. Con of wonderful, wonderful conversation. So please, for everybody interested in Manifesto Poetico and their work, go on their website because this was just a little part of all the amazing big work they are doing. So check out the website. It's full of more videos information everything about their project and, and it couldn't couldn't be better for almost the last episode because uh yes. next week will be the last episode with of uh, comedy in quarantena with the faction of fools from washington dc so, so thank you, gracias. Thank you Esteves and Paige Arleton. thank you Arigato. Okay. muchas gracias merci beaucoup grazie yeah. tante thank you grazie mille grazie state bene Arrivederci, ciao. ciao. Arrivederci, ciao. Ciao. Ciao.